Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to talk about uh, intrinsics. So, like we looked at last time, which was uh, looking at the Intel MKL, which is the math kernel library, we saw that you know one way that we can speed up our code is by using an optimized library that you know kind of abstracts a lot of the you know the low-level details away from us, but it gets pretty good performance. And we saw you know how well you know Intel MKL's version of double precision matrix multiplication uh, did against our naive, just kind of simple implementation. Uh, so in this video, we're going to look at uh, another type of optimization we can do, which is using intrinsic functions. Now, a library like MKL might not have every single function on the face of the planet. In fact, it doesn't. Uh, and there will be many cases where you know, we kind of want to make our own uh, function for our own very specific purposes. So this brings us to you know what is an intrinsic function. So when we're talking about an extrin uh, intrinsic function, uh, these will be things that are handled, you know, kind of specially by the compiler. So a compiler will look at this, and a lot of times uh, it looks up things like, you know, how I can optimize uh, this specific um, piece of code. So in this case, we're going to be talking about uh, Intel's SIMD intrinsic, intrinsics, and we're talking about SIMD. We're talking about single instruction, multiple data. So there's a lot of ways we can have parallels in a program. One way is by having multiple threads. Another way is by using uh, the vector hardware that exists uh, inside you know, of our processors. So in this case, we'll be using AVX, and AVX stands for Advanced Vector Extensions. So if we go to Optimizations, and we go to SIMD Intrinsics, we'll go ahead and have an example called HelloAVX.CPP. Now, you know, in this case, we're going to be using um, this 256-bit uh, uh, new data type that we get uh, that's defined in this IMM intrin.h. So if we want to use these intrinsics, we need this header. And so here we'll have a 256-bit data type. And over here, when we have this set, this will go ahead and set the values of this 256-bit data type. So this is saying, for, for this 256-bit data type, I need you to set it with the values, and the type of data is going to be PS. So PS just stands for packed single precision. So in this case, if we divide 256 by 32, so uh, there's 32 bits for a single floating point number. So 256 divided by 32 is 8, so it can sort 8 floats. So we'll go ahead and have uh, a set of 8 even numbers and 8 odd numbers. And we'll go ahead and use the vector hardware to do the subtraction of these two. So in this case, we'll do we'll have a result that will also be this underscore underscore m256. So a 256 bit number minus a 256 bit number will give us a 256 bit number. Uh, or rather, it'll give us you know those individual numbers that we actually want, which will be the uh, the um, these packed single precision numbers. But the total length won't exceed 256 bits. Now, in this case, we'll just do uh, evens minus odds. So all the answers here will end up being one, right? So all these subtractions. So two minus one is one. Four minus three is one, etc. Now, all of these you know functions tend to have the same kind of format, and that'll be the underscore mm, and then it'll be the bit width of the operation. So it'll be 256 bits, and then it will be uh, the name of the operation. So in this, uh, in this case, it'll be sub for subtraction, and then it'll be the data type. So in this case, it's single precision numbers, so we'll do ps for packed single precision. Now, if we want to access these numbers, so you know, at this point, we've went ahead and did the subtraction. Now, uh, like I said, this subtraction, depending on your hardware uh, and depending on you know how wide the, uh, the vector hardware is, you can have all of these subtractions going on at the exact same time. So instead of like in a serial program where you might queue things up one after another after another, you can just have them all going at the exact same time and finish at the same time. So if we want to access these, we'll go ahead and just do, uh, we'll cast the result, which is that M256 data type, as a float uh, pointer. So we'll cast the address of it as a float pointer, and then we can access all eight of those floating point numbers one by one, which we'll go ahead and print out as all ones. So we'll go ahead and compile this. So we'll do G++. Uh, then we have to specify which set of intrinsics we're using. So um, there's a number, depending on your architecture, it may support different uh, sets of intrinsics. Uh, so again, these intrinsics we're talking about you know, they could be hardware specific because you know not every single processor has the exact same vector hardware. Now in this case, uh, we do support the AVX intrinsics on my processor, so I can go ahead and do dash m AVX, which says use the AVX. You know, if you have a very old processor, maybe it only supports the SSE intrinsics. Maybe it supports you know 
AVX2. So again, AVX is advanced vector extension. So in this case, we'll just do dash MAVX, and then we'll go ahead and do dash O, hello, underscore AVX, and then hello AVX.cpp. And unsurprisingly, when we run it, we get all one. So we'll get eight um, floating point numbers as a result, which will be all one in this case. Now, um, you may not, uh, the important thing is, you know, sometimes seeing is believing. So just because we see the right result, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, maybe when we're directly looking at it, that, you know, this is, that we're actually using vector instructions. And so the big motivation here was we're using special instructions that we wouldn't get if we just compiled this normally. So I, I'll go, I went ahead and ha have a little baseline example that does the exact same thing. But instead of using, you know, the 256-bit data type, we're just using an array of floats. And then we'll go ahead and just serially add these together. So in this case, we'll go ahead and compile this. Uh, dash O, we don't need to do dash MAVX because we're not using the intrinsics. So dash O, baseline, and then we'll pass in baseline.cpp. Unsurprisingly, again, it'll give us the right answer, but the more important thing is the actual assembly itself. So we can go ahead and dump the assembly by doing opj dump dash D, and we'll say out. Uh, so we'll dump hello AVX first, and we'll put that to out one.asm, and we'll do the exact same thing with the baseline binary, and we'll have out2.asm, and then we'll go ahead and open these up. So we'll open up out1.asm, and then we'll do vsplit for out2.asm, right? And so now we've got, we'll go ahead and go back to the main function. So we've got this, uh, there's the identifier, main, and we'll go to the identifier in the next one, right? So there's main. And so right off the bat, we can see that some instructions that we don't find on the other side Right, so we see this move ss, but on the other side we see this v move ss, and we'll see a lot of kind of v prefixes to prefix uh, prefixes rather to things on the right side, which is our code that we've used intrinsics with, uh, because the v generally just stands for vector. Right, and so we see uh, you know a bunch of different operations that if we kind of go down through, we see that we're still using these vector registers, uh, these xmm registers, but we see that you know we don't really see a lot of these same you know, vector instructions. And so these are something that we only get uh, when the compiler knows, hey, this person wants to use these intrinsics. I know how to use, um, you know, this kind of, you know, preset, you know, couple lines of, you know, assembly code that does this operation. And it can play around with that. And so um, in later examples, what we'll end up doing is we'll kind of compare if we do a naive implementation of, you know, even just a simple operation, like doing a bunch of additions. And if we did that with, you know, now, the SIMD extensions are using intrinsic functions uh, and doing wide kind of additions or subtractions versus if we had to do it all serially, we can, you know, even further kind of show that there is a difference here and kind of motivate the use of SIMD intrinsics um, when, of course, it's, it's something that makes sense to do. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this example. Feel free to check out all of my uh, code that I write on github.com slash coffee before arch. So we've got stuff on GPU programming with CUDA, parallel programming in C++, even some stuff on Python and uh, object-oriented design patterns. So we looked at C++ crash course and on optimizations. And so we looked at MKL last time, which is using the math kernel library. This time we looked at uh, SIMD intrinsics. So if we go ahead and go to hello avx.cpp, we've got the example. So most modern processors, um, if not all modern Intel processors will, you know, support you know the AVX and in, uh, intrinsics. Uh, but again, this is something that you might have to check uh, your specific processor version. And this is a fairly easy thing to do going on Intel site and seeing what, um, you know, what SIMD uh, you know, vector extensions does your processor support. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. As always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.